Sound can break glass. Sound can rupture eardrums and even bend metal. Sound affects the physical world around us. So if it can destroy, then maybe, just maybe, it can also create. In his enlightening book, Music, A Subversive History, Ted Goya delves into the intricate relationship between music and the idea of sound creation. Goya writes, in many religions, vibrations, sound, or the spoken word are attributed to the act of creation. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Cue music. Hey YouTube, my name is Julia, and welcome to the MCs, music at the core of everything. And a thousand years before John wrote those words, cultures around the world thought we and our entire universe was created by sound and music. Maybe they were onto something. Let's find out. So actually, that's why we're here today. The Christian religion is not the only religion that believes that sound and music are integral to the creation of life and the universe. We're here today at the Georgia Buddhist Vihara Center because Buddhism is one of the religions that believes that you can connect to life and the universe itself through sound and music. So later we'll have an interview with one of the monks who resides in this temple to see what he thinks about all this. Goya writes, in many religions, vibrations, sound, or the spoken word are attributed to the act of creation. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. John may have been one of the very first people ever to describe a sound, God's spoken words, as an actual physical solid object, Jesus. Not only was sound used as a vehicle for creation, but sound itself had physical, tangible qualities. To the audience receiving the gospel, John's intentions in this statement would be clear. The Word is connected with the God of Israel, the creator of all things. John further explains the idea two verses later in John chapter 1, verse 3. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. The Word is the sole means by which reality finds its existence. Today, neuroscientists, musicologists, psychologists, and anthropologists continue to ponder why humans enjoy music so much. And I had to practice that line a lot. <laughs> the discovery of 40,000-year-old bone flutes in a cave in Germany, perhaps the oldest musical instruments on record, suggests that music has accompanied Homo sapiens since ancient times. But what is its function? The question has puzzled experts for centuries, and there's still no conclusive answer. In the 5th century BC, the school of Pythagoras suggested that music governed the harmony of the stars. Now, to understand it better, think of two friends, let's say planet A and planet B, who are in some kind of celestial harmony. Every time planet A goes around the sun twice, its companion planet B goes around three times. This harmony causes them to come close at certain points in their orbits, which can be expressed in waves or a frequency. The movements of the planets in their spheres follow the ratios and rules that govern the rest of the cosmos. As a result of this, the planetary spheres made music. Their movements and following of these harmonic rules resulted in them emitting their own sounds, or in other words, their own music. 
This wasn't audible music, of course. We can't hear the music of the spheres, as Aristotle points out in his very critical account of this theory. Instead, it's a kind of higher form of music, the audible version we can hear only being a kind of relatively pale reflection. After all, according to this worldview, everything is music. Since music and mathematics are essentially the same thing, all of reality is musical since it is harmonious and ordered according to the same rules and patterns. When we hear music in the form of sounds, this is a manifestation of the fundamental principles of the cosmos itself, including the movements of the spheres and the music that they make. So Pythagoras, the man who created the 12-tone notation system, dividing sound into 12 equally distant frequencies or musical notes, starting at A, would of course see the universe as a symphony. And although he may have been a scientist, he was not afraid of the mystical, even the straight-up supernatural. He had his own cult, for goodness sakes. Diogenes Laertes, which is a mouthful, retells a story told by Hermippus of Samus, which is also a mouthful. Who comes up with these names? <laughs> It states that Pythagoras once entered an underground room, announcing his descent into the underworld. He remained in this room for months, while his mother secretly documented all that transpired during his absence. Upon his return from this room, Pythagoras recounted everything that occurred during his absence, convincing everyone that he had genuinely been in the underworld. This led them to trust him with their wives. God knows why. Kind of weird. <laughs> like, what, what, why, are you giving, why are you giving your wives away? What the heck? So Pythagoras probably saw his creating music as a matter of spirit as much as mathematical curiosity. But creating the foundation upon which music will be built makes you more than special. The unfortunate part of Pythagoras inventing the 12-note system was, after that, the racism and bias against other cultures' music became even more prevalent. Now the Grecians thought they alone somehow held the key to music and philosophy. In their arrogance, they simply dismissed other cultures' music and religions as unsophisticated. But that's a story for another video. And we will make that video. You better believe it. But the truth is, there were other cultures and religions that claimed to unlock the connections between vibrations, sounds, music, the universe, and its creation over 2,000 years before Pythagoras was even born. End scene two. <laughs> End of scene two. Mic drop. Mic drop. And this is called a shrine room. The purpose means actually the uh, normally uh, we do our uh, chanting here, the morning and evening chanting. And sometimes when people come to the temple, they come to the shrine room uh, and they pay respect to the Buddha. It's fascinating how sound functions in spirituality. Buddhism and Hinduism have been experimenting with these aspects for centuries. Both traditions have assigned significant importance to sound and vibration as means for spiritual elevation. I am Bhante Panamvela Vajira Bhutti, the abbot of Georgia Buddhist Vihara in Atlanta, city of a strong crest. I start with uh, Namo Tansi Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambundas Namo Tansi Bhagavato Arhato Samma Yes, uh, chanting uh, is one of the main practice practices in Buddhism uh, because it is uh, part of meditation. When you are chanting, you are concentrating of words and then 
you can feel calm and relax of hearing that the soothing chanting so the meditation also is uh, is part of a uh, chanting because when we chanting we need to understand the contents and the meanings of the word and then realizing those words so uh, the chanting is what uh, supreme buddha uh, taught us delivered uh, as dhamma or teaching you know the the word has enormous power the word we can make someone happy or we can make someone cry it depend upon the the qualities of the word so the that is that is the vibration if we say nice and kind and sweet word to someone that vibration make that person happy if we say unwholesome word unkind word harsh word useless word that vibration makes someone unhappy so that's that's that is actually vibration goes with because the word have that power to make someone knock down or unhappy or even uh, destroy his entire life by saying such a uh, useless word or harsh words the music uh, can i the music also makes make people very much of joyful because when they hear the music that's a vibration make that person dancing jumping you know and yelling and and that is how that vibration work with music that is you know uh, that is it make someone uh, joyful of hearing uh, of uh, such a very powerful music like Mike, uh, michael jackson and you know i don't remember all of the, uh, the singers name but you know they they are very very powerful voice and they are very famous when they are saying people will they chose the joy too much and then they sometimes they cry sometimes they they get heart attack that is vibration you know yes they are jumping and you know all kind of act- actions going on because of the voice and the person's voice actually uh, tibetan buddhist the japan buddhist korean and uh, vietnam sri lanka myanmar and uh, india uh, tibet so uh, those countries they follow buddhism but the the way of chanting sometimes is different okay. sometimes not sometimes totally different uh, mostly in uh, theravada tradition our tradition our sect we follow pali chanti language of pali that's the oldest language so we use pali as chanti but in tibetan and uh, uh, vietnam japan they translate those pali to their own language okay they, they they chant in their own language when tibetan uh, monks when they are chanting the voice come from the deep uh, throat like oh, something like that yes. yeah it, it has it has more effort can chant it just normally but you know we can have a different like different voices and then making is uh, some kind of uh, you know different between uh, normal chanting and special chanting yeah. so then we select some group of monks so when when we chant 
Dice Namo Tassuse Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambundasse Namo Tassuse Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambundasse Namo Tassuse Despite the seemingly incongruent interconnectedness promoted by Buddhism, the significance of sound in spiritual practice reflects the belief that by harmonizing the mind with the vibrations of sound, one can align with cosmic energy and experience greater spiritual understanding and balance. In this way, sound plays a fundamental role in meditation for other sounds like bells or Tibetan bowls to focus their minds and achieve a state of mindfulness. The rhythmic repetition of sounds helps dispel disturbing thoughts and connect with the spiritual essence. In Hinduism, mantras also play a central role in spirituality. Each syllable and sound in a mantra is considered sacred and powerful. The recitation of mantras such as Om is believed to have the potential to connect practitioners with the divine and aid in the quest for enlightenment. Hinduism also embraces the idea that the universe is composed of vibrations and energy. Belief in cosmic harmony and sound as a vehicle to achieve it is a cornerstone of Hindu spirituality. Through sound and music, Hindus seek to align their souls with the cosmic order. According to the sacred text of Hinduism, the whole universe springs forth from a primordial sound, a cosmic vibration that permeates every nook and cranny of existence. And you know what they call this divine sound? It's own. One of the most notable milestones in the exploration of cosmic harmony was Johannes Kepler's work Harmonicus Mundi. Kepler, much like ancient Hindu sages, embarked on a journey to unravel the secret music of the heavens. In his work, Kepler sought patterns and mathematical laws governing planetary movements believing that the harmony of the celestial spheres influenced the earthly world. Kepler wrote, quote, the heavenly motions are nothing but a continuous song for several voices, to be perceived by the intellect, not by the ear. A music which, through discordant tensions, through syncopations and cadences, as it were, progresses towards certain pre-designed six-voiced cadences, and thereby sets landmarks in the immeasurable flow of time." End quote. So, as we delve into the cosmic symphony of Hinduism, with Om and its influence on spirituality, Let's not forget that at the heart of astronomy and cosmology, Kepler and his harmonicist Mundi also sought the echo of that same harmony in the cosmos. Two perspectives, two cultures, a constant quest for the celestial music that connects the divine with the earthly. Scientists have embarked on a quest to understand the building blocks of our universe. String theory, for instance, proposes that the fundamental particles are not point-like entities, but tiny vibrating strings give rise to the various phenomena we observe, shaping the intricate tapestry of our existence. The idea that sound and music played a role in the creation of the universe, as perceived in various cultural and spiritual traditions, bears some interesting similarities to concepts found in string theory, a branch of theoretical physics. While these concepts are not directly equivalent, they share certain resonances. Number one, vibration and creation. Both the cultural beliefs and string theory involve the notion of vibration or resonance as fundamental to the creation of the universe. In cultural beliefs, it's the primordial sound or music 
While in string theory, it's the vibrational patterns of tiny strings that underlie the fabric of space-time. Number two, fundamental units. In both cases, there's a suggestion that the universe's building blocks are not solid particles, but rather fundamental elements with vibrational properties. In cultural beliefs, these could be described as spiritual or mystical. While in string theory, they're actually tiny strings that form the basis of all matter and forces. Number three, interconnectedness. Cultural beliefs often highlight the idea of interconnectedness, where everything is linked through sound and vibration. Similarly, string theory suggests a complex web of interactions and interconnectedness among the vibrating strings, which give rise to the various particles and forces in the universe. Number four, multidimensionality. String theory suggests that there are multiple dimensions beyond the familiar three spatial dimensions. This idea aligns with some spiritual and cultural beliefs that include higher dimensions or planes of existence beyond our ordinary perception. So I Ancient cultures believed that sound and music were the foundation of creation. And this concept still resonates in our lives today. From the Bible to Buddhism and Hinduism, sound is considered a divine tool that connects us to the cosmic. Just as orbital resonance in celestial mechanics, where planets and moons dance to the rhythm of a cosmic symphony, this mathematical harmony in space shows us that the music of the universe goes far beyond what we can hear, and its understanding reveals the secrets of our solar system. Science and spirituality intertwine like notes in a score, creating a narrative that connects us to the true essence of our cosmos. But beyond any theory, why don't you try some sound meditation? Really, I dare you to give it a try with complete sincerity and see if maybe you too can experience that harmony. Thanks for watching guys, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, or even join our page for really cool perks. We even have merch down there, somewhere. I, I think my dad bought a mug, so. <laughs> As always, my name's Julia, and thanks again for watching The MCs, music at the core of everything.